Welcome to The Social Podcast, where no discussion or debate is off limits. Uh, Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to The Social. Uh, A big shout out. We have got Winnipeg, Manitoba, Laval, Quebec, and Yellowknife Northwest Territory. Wow! That's incredible. Yes. Welcome, welcome. All right, well, thanks for coming. Let's start things off with a hot one. We're starting with Lizzo, who shocked fans on Instagram when she shared this video of herself uh, out with her mom on Friday night. Lizzo's been open about her weight loss journey, sharing recipes and workouts, but her new look has everyone talking. So, (laughs) do Lizzo fans have the right to comment on her weight loss. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. oh interesting. Interesting. Yeah. interesting. I mean, I was more shocked at how much her mother looks like her sister. Yeah. <laughs> yes. like, I was just like, wow, that's her mother? Anyway, do I, I mean, I think the thing is, is that the, the woman has had the experience, I think she said this, that she's been both ozempic shamed and fat shamed by mm-hmm. her uh-huh. audience. So mm-hmm. people are both accusing her of using weight loss drugs, which I don't necessarily think she has, and people also still calling her, even in this smaller body, that mm-hmm. she's too big, right? So she's mm-hmm. kind of, it's like she, she can't win. Yeah. And yeah. I think one of the things that people have made the mistake of is assuming that somebody who is a part of the body mm-hmm. positivity movement is saying that they would never want to lose weight ever. Mm-hmm. I think we've made that assumption. Yes, you, well, you I, hit the I, what they're actually anyone is saying is is that I deserve to love myself and love my body and other people should accept that at any size mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. Uh, that is you you bring up something really really interesting because I am always there for the comments should you I mean do they have a right to comment yes should they is another question mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. um so, so a lot of people do make that choice to publicly comment I think she almost invited it in a sense like follow me on this health journey mm-hmm. um but in this case you said something that was very 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 interesting to me. And I think the next question, I, I think some people feel duped from the body positivity movement. Okay. When they see a public figure who is a plus size, lose weight, they're like, but you told me I was beautiful at any size. Like, yeah. what's going on? How dare you? Mm-hmm. And then in the next breath, it's like, but how did you do it? Mm-hmm. What kind of pill did you take? Yeah. Is it a shake? Mm-hmm. What did you have for breakfast? It's like, it makes me feel like the it makes me feel like the body positivity thing is kind of like a conspiracy theory. Is, is it a conspiracy mm. theory or is it our problem? Because I think we have a, such um, a terrible relationship with weight in North America especially. And I think my take on this is that, again, I think they can comment. Uh, she's really yeah. invited everybody into her journey. And just to remind people, she's been on a weight loss journey for years. So the idea that this was dramatic or overnight, if you follow her on Instagram, she's been showing you literally every single thing that she's doing. But I think that the other thing of this is that to your point, Cynthia, that does everybody who's body positive, which by the way, Lizzo has distanced herself from the word body positive. She now uses the term body neutrality. And for her, and maybe that means something and maybe it means nothing, (laughs) I don't know. But I think for her, she's been really caught between a rock and a hard place because does skinny equal healthy? We know that's not true, Mm -hmm. but do we know that for some people there is such a thing as your best weight? She's not trying to be a size two. She is trying to be smaller, and why? Because her doctor said, I've been looking at your numbers, honey, Mm. and you need to do something. So part of her journey is mental health, physical health. She's not trying to be a two. She's trying to bring her numbers down so she doesn't develop diabetes. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we have to find room for new ones. Yeah, Mm -hmm. she's doing it for her health. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, love Lizzo, but I am mad at Lizzo, and I've been mad at Lizzo for a few years now. Go I on. love her. Here's the deal. I love her because she's everything I want in a pop star. She's unapologetically confident. She doesn't care what people think. She's super talented. She can play the flute and she can twerk, and she can also play the flute while she's twerking. <laughs> like, this is a super talented woman who came onto the scene and think about all the other pop stars and what they look like. Sabrina Carpenter, Taylor Swift, you know, Olivia Rodrigo. There's definitely a look, and she's so outside of that, and I think it's necessary, especially now with music, to see someone who looks different than, like, the cookie-cutter pop stars. And, you know, I remember when I got mad at her. It was actually 2019. <laughs> she went to a Lakers game, and she wore this outfit. I think we have the photo of the outfit, right? She wore this outfit. She was Lizzo. Now listen, pop stars and rock stars showing up at sporting events and wearing crazy outfits is not new. She showed up and she showed out and we're blurring it because that is her booty. Yes, she did. She was twerking oh, she a little went, bit. Oh, I yeah, see. She went I all see. out. She's sitting I'm right using there, my right? imagination. And, and then afterwards, of course, the trolls went 
after her. And this is where I got mad at her. She took the time to take her phone and answer those people <gasps> and be like, listen, I love my body. Don't get on me, you trolls. Are. And I'm like, this is the part where I'm mad because I'm like, you're so talented. Why are you even giving these people a platform? They can't do half the things that you can do. Yeah. And I wish that she, I know it's a rock and a hard place because you want to be the person who's like, I'm going to talk about my weight and be very positive about it. But once you open that door, and you let people in, you can't say, okay, you can't talk about my weight anymore. Right. So I, regardless of what she does, it's always going to be a conversation. And I'll just say this, there are other pop stars, Adele, but we never talk about her weight. Oh, I don't think that's true. She, well, no, no, I no, don't we do. Girl. People we talk do. about it, but she doesn't talk about she it. She doesn't never talk addresses about it. it. Yeah. So it's always well, she about did with her Oprah. music. She, she almost got it. She'll do, yeah, she a did serious with interview, Oprah. but she's not taking yeah. her phone and being like, yeah, I see the comments. And that is what I really wish that she had done. Listen, I don't think Lizzo can win. I think that also she's been in hot water too. She's had some, you know, controversy surrounding her. There yeah, was a time when her dancers issues. were talking mm -hmm. about her. So I think just because she came forward as somebody who was in a different size body, I think she had to address it. It's almost like um, she wanted to show people that you can love yourself and be in a bigger body. I think it was a really powerful statement. I still remember my, my son watching one of her performances where she had a big blown up bum, like a, like a yeah. up on the stage. And, yeah, and I, he right. was like, why was the bum mm -hmm. on, on the stage? I was like, I think she really likes bums. Yeah. And so he like, I think she's done a lot for for, for people, again, I think it's more important for us just to say you can love yourself and be lovable hate, in any body size. Yeah. Yeah. And you can change that body size if Absolutely. you so choose to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But when you start talking to the trolls, that's the problem. Right. Okay. That's the problem. Ignore the trolls. That is good advice. Uh, so, okay, next question. Are you guilty of fubbing? Okay, that is, I, I, you know, it sounds a bit rude, but it's actually when you <laughs> snub someone by checking your phone mid-conversation. So experts told the New York Times it can breed marital dis dis dissatisfaction, excuse me, and feelings of distrust. So <laughs> do you fub and... Or does it bother you when people fuck? Yeah, I see a lot of heads nodding. Well, I feel triggered by this story because uh, this weekend I actually got fubbed. <gasps> I, had, I had a date to go. We Our plan was to go and see Gladiator, go see a movie and have a good time. And before the movie, we were going to... Was this a first date, Andrea? Uh, this was a first date, uh -huh. but we know each other. We know each other. So before the date, we met for drinks first and then we're supposed to go uh, to the movie. And while we were sitting across from each other, uh, my date decided that this is what he wanted to do. Mind you, I am dressed up. The yeah, girl, you, you look good. I'm you look good. I'm ready for conversation. And he hit me with one of these. He put his earpiece in, one of them, and then he was like doing this with his phone. And I sat across sorry, from him. Sorry, and I need more details. Wait, 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 wait. So, like, you've gone out for a drink. The drinks are ordered. They're sitting there. You're talking to each other. No, and we're he... not talking to each other because he's decided that even before the drinks arrive, that he wants to pay attention to his phone. And he does, there's no disclaimer. There's no. I'm so nope, sorry. No, no, no. It was a family not emergency. Not yeah. Nothing. And I was. And here's the deal. I did not go off because I was like, there could be a work issue. Yeah. It could be something about you know someone's yeah. texting. Sure. And but I realized I looked over and this person was just on their social media. Oh. Just no. Oh. So that's a deal breaker. So Done. What, so what I did was I laid into this person verbally. I will not repeat what I said to them, but I was I expressed how I was very disappointed and pissed off for being here. I'm like, I'm here. We made plans, and you have a person sitting across from you, but you are so locked into nothing on your phone. And I'm like, you know what? We have plans to go see a movie, and I'm I'm over it. I'm not I'm not doing it. Oh. oh. Listen, I'm also, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm sick and tired of walking down the street and having to yes. move out of the way of everybody who just thinks yeah. it's more important for them to stare at their phones than to actually look up and see where they're but going. I, I will... Put the phone down. I, I feel terrible for you because, by the way, whoever you are, you deserved all of that. Um, so <laughs> you, know that. you absolutely deserve that. The flip side of that, I'm not going to defend him, but I am going to defend the fact that you know that people who have created these apps have actually spent millions of dollars on psychologists, behavioral psychologists, mm -hmm. to put tips and tricks into their apps to force us to get locked in like an addiction. In other words, it's not simply as, as easy as saying, I have willpower and today I'm gonna put my phone down. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. I but, have willpower. But it's actually, they actually design apps like they do slot machines in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to lock you in. So there's a balance and a push and a pull always between willpower, which is a small part of it. But I say this that, I hate fubbing. Mm. I hate it. And guess what? I'm also 100% guilty, guilty of it. Guilty of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to work on it, but I also know it's not just as simple as, it's also, Melissa, put your phone down. Right? It's also we know connected, this our kids. Yeah, it's connected to our anxiety as well. That's the other yeah. piece, is that I imagine the scenario, and I'm not trying to defend him. Oh, but look, I hear he, a lot of defending. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. 
I'm not trying to defend him. I'm not trying to defend him. I'm not at all. I'm not at all. But I, I think the, the crazy thing about social media is that it both provokes anxiety and it soothes anxiety. So a lot of times you'll feel like you're like, what am I, fe I feel uncomfortable. I don't know why. Oh, what am I missing? What am I forgetting about? And then all of a sudden you find yourself like this. How many people have gone through that? Yeah. Right? It's yeah, just yeah. kind of this weird thing that we now gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. So if he was feeling uncomfortable, I'm not surprised. Like maybe he was nervous. Here's the deal. Maybe you, he, he you thought, cannot complain about the dating scene and not being able to find a decent person and then going on a date and locking into your phone. You can stay in yeah. your bedroom yep. in your pajamas and do that. Mm -hmm. so He's a grown man. Presumably. He's a grown yeah. man. <laughs> He's a grown man. He's a grown, He's a grown man. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do better. So listen, have any of you heard of the platform Blue Sky? Blue I Sky, love. none of us, okay. Well, it turns out it is an alternative to X, which is formerly Twitter. So it's gotten super popular since the U.S. election. Uh, in fact, quite a few of our own MPs, including NDP leader Jagmeet Singh, they've joined, and a lot of people are saying you're actually able, this is what they say, to have a civil, constructive conversation online. I don't even know what that means and looks like anymore. So mm. is that even possible in 2024, Jess? I pulled this back thinking about sort of the, the bigger picture and like the idea of having a town hall like in media. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that will ever happen again. And I don't think so. And I wonder if it ever happened in the first place. Uh -huh. Like if we're sort of looking back on media, newspapers, radio, the history of said things with rose colored glasses. Mm. Because if you think about it from the very inception, I believe newspapers generally tended to run right or left. Mm -hmm. I think what we're missing is sort of that curated, smart opinion. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. actually think Twitter in its halcyon days was that. It was curated, there were smart opinions, and there were different smart opinions. How was it curated, mm. though? I think because the algorithm by Elon Musk was not introduced to spread disinformation ah. and garbage yeah. and hate, and, and it fuels that right now. So I do think there was a time, like, that's why I went to it, and I think that's why a lot of people have left, because mm -hmm. it is kind of garbagey now. Yeah. But Blue Sky, you have to be an invited to you have to be invited to join. And oh. once, I don't know about if wow. anyone's dropped off Twitter, but once I dropped off, I'm like, I don't, I'm not rushing to fill that gap. No. Do you know what I mean? I have a question for you. When you dropped off, did you miss it? Exactly, no. Because here's my thing. I'm not signing up for this, not because I have anything against it, mainly because I find myself withdrawing from most of the social media that I'm on already. And if not for this job, I would yeah. get rid of a couple others. And I don't know. I feel like when I'm scrolling sometimes, I almost get like a physical uneasy feeling yes. if I scroll for too long. Yes. Am I the only one? No. I'm like, no. you know what? I need to put this down and I've actually gone old school. And you know, the older people enjoy this. I'm now buying newspapers because I'm like, I want the information, yeah. but I want it. I don't want a person screaming face telling me on but my even phone that doesn't, about that what's doesn't happening. necessarily fix what this is supposed to be. Like if we go back to that idea of the, the town square, right? Yeah. Where you would connect with people of different views. I mean, again, that might've been idealized, idealized, but then we've got these silos, right? So even this might be problematic, despite yeah. it saying, oh, everyone's getting along really well. Well, is everyone of the exact same political opinion? Cultural same thing. Opinion? Exactly. And how do you keep the box? Those silo. are silos, too. How do you keep the trolls, and how do you keep so the box? So what about up? this? I, to me, you will never, ever get away with it as long as we still have avatars. At, like, if you, people don't have to be forced to be showing themselves. themselves. Mm -hmm. you're, you're rife for bots and trolls and whatever. Mm -hmm. What about this? Meeting actually in person. There is a new app. It's called Time Left. Every Wednesday, the idea is that five strangers get together and they meet in person for dinner, okay? And it's they're creating an algorithm to find sort of, con like, I, I don't and think where are their phones gonna be? Because I'm ready to pop off again. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good question. But it's a really interesting experiment. It's taking place there's, uh, in Toronto, in Montreal, in Lisbon, and, and in London so far. And I think that that's the start of something interesting. Because or if going you get, back to what we were right? you get to people do together. 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 Getting and together to talk. I, I don't know that we're ever gonna get back there. I think in mm. 2024 and with the uh, with the advent of extremely sophisticated algorithms, mm. our algorithm, what is an algorithm? It learns what you like yes. and it feeds you more of that. Yeah. And not only does you it to actively you, look for something, you have to look yeah. for that. What, the only way this is possible, which no media company is going to ever do, is get rid of algorithms. But right. you know why they're never going to do that? Because, because the ad they can dollars. send you so much Money. targeted marketing. Yeah. So the ad companies, the products, the brands, they own us because why do I need an algorithm? Because apparently I'm looking for over the knee suede boots right now. Yeah. <laughs> the algorithm is going to keep feeding me that. And when the algorithm does that, it has also been shown that the algorithm pushes you more extreme. So if you looked up suede boots, 
in no time, all of a sudden, it's going to be, it better be vegan and no animal should be killed because this is what you believe because your algorithm tells me so. So you see, until algorithms disappear, which AI is just feeding us all this stuff, I don't think, I think those days are gone. long gone. Mm. I really I, do. I don't know if I'm mad about it. No, I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm not mad either. I'm not mad either. Anyway. As the great uh, Ariana Grande says, <laughs> thank you, next. The New York Times fashion critic is praising Adele and her signature long black dresses. They did the math. We love. And Adele has worn more than 50 little black dresses since her Las Vegas residency started. So do you love a long black dress or do you want... Uh. <laughs> Would you like Adele wearing 50 black dresses in a row, or would you crave for some bold color thrown in there? Want some bold color. There we go. I, I mean, want Adele is, uh, has made a very bold decision to basically semi-retire. She's retreating from the spotlight after this is done. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, she's arguably at the top of her game. She's incredibly talented. And she's decided to say, I don't want to do this anymore. She's taking time to be with her family. And I think that I would have loved to have seen something bold, like, that, like it's a bold decision. But she's not Bjork. No, right? she's not going to come out in a swan dress. She's like, I feel like she's like a, a like got the the soul of like a woman from nineteen. Like she's got the soul of uh, Catherine Hepburn or Audrey Hepburn. Yeah. Or okay. somebody okay. like you know from a long time ago. I, I love this. She's not J Lo. She's not Taylor Swift. She is Adele. And mm. what does Adele do? She sings. She's known for her voice. She's not a dance queen. She's not going to give you six thousand costume changes a la Taylor Swift this past two weeks in Toronto. So I think that if you're there for Adele, if I, I mean, if I was going to go, I wouldn't be there going, what's she wearing? I'd be there to say, I want to hear my favorite ballads. I want to hear that voice. You know, she's so funny. Yeah. So I'd like to see the banter. But if you're there just for the outfit, I think she's making a statement saying, don't look at what I'm wearing. Listen to me. I know, Listen but here's the deal. I think there's another pop singer by the name of Mariah Carey who doesn't do a lot of dancing. I was like, girl, put on a sparkle <laughs> or two. And that's Mariah. That's Mariah. And, I, and here's the deal. But what I'm saying is the same style of singer, where it's like, yeah. you're not getting all this backup dancing and singing. She's just going to sing and stand in a nice gown, but she's a very different style. But I'll say this much. I really was going to try to see Adele at her Vegas residency. And I don't know if you guys peeped the price. The cheapest seats were $3,500. And that was for the cheap seats. Never mind Taylor Swift tickets. This was so expensive. I had no idea. And I feel like if I, <laughs> I feel like she could wear a brighter color. So for those of us who would like to see it, who are all the way up there, we could notice her. She wore like a different <laughs> color. We're like, there she is, the little red dot. Because if she wears black, we're never gonna see her from all the way up there. But her tickets were very expensive. So she, the least she could do was put on a little bit of color so we could always find her on stage. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, uh, so listen up, a mom of a five-year-old of five-year-old twins, she sparked debate on TikTok after she said that both of her kids need to be invited to a birthday party. One cannot go without the other. Mm -hmm. So parents, non-parents, do we agree with the all or nothing invite policy with kids? I think yes. I I agree. It's mm -hmm. gotta be all, especially for young twins until you realize that one of those twins is evil. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll be singing a different tune. Oh, oh, what do you mean, oh, yes. An evil twin. <laughs> yeah, how is that other twin gonna feel? Like, that's the bad twin and you're inviting... <laughs> It's true. <laughs> Isn't there always an evil twin? She's being sarcastic. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. evil uh, twin. I don't, I mean, it's funny because my daughter has the situation in her friend group. She's got twins, the girls, and then she also has another set of, um, of her friends that are sisters, not twins. Mm -hmm. And I've had this dilemma when I'm trying to organize like outings for all the girls. I just invite both twins. I invite all the sisters because I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, and I also was pulled aside by one of the moms, mm -hmm. Hi Jackie, who's the mom of the girls, not the twins. Okay. And she's like, you know you can break up the siblings, right? And I was like, I can? She goes, yes, that's a lesson for life. What's the age gap? The lesson uh, the, between all, they're all within sort of three years of each other, okay. right? All of them. So it's, it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm only two years apart from my sister, but I never did everything with my sister. But anyway, going back to Jackie's uh, advice, she's like, this is called a lesson for life. Is life is not going to always have you two side by side. Right. And, my, and for my daughter, I think the lesson there is if you have an affinity or a closeness to one more than the other, 
that's okay too. Mm -hmm. So it's a life lesson wrapped up. But don't worry, girls, we're inviting everyone all the time for the next pursuit. Yeah. Oh future. my God. I hear you yeah, make yeah, some really valid points, but I think regardless if you're five years old or if you're 95 years old, leaving people out of things is a wrong thing to do, especially when we're talking about children. What, and my question is, why are you leaving them out? Is this a financial reason or are you just leaving them out because you don't like them that much? I think people don't realize when you leave people out, A, it always gets back to them and it makes them feel horrible. So to me, it's never what ever age, worth but it. Obviously, they're not going to continue through life. Like, There's a point listen, at time when you're making listen, your own friends. Listen, as individuals, if they, they're going to branch off and they're going to make friends, they're going to have different interests and let them naturally have that. But if you're having a soiree and it's like everybody's going to have slab cake and some chips, just invite everybody. But what if your daughter, like I say in my daughter's case, what if my daughter was actually only friends with one of the twins mm -hmm. and she's not actually close they, with the other twin? So where's the other twin? Does your, the other twin's in another classroom? No, no. First of all, just newsflash, twins don't roll side by side, arm no, no, in arm I the whole day. That. I get that, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still saying, you know what? If you know it's going to cause a problem, because I think you have to know the situation. You have to know the people, because we can go through a million scenarios, mm -hmm. but I always say, just invite it. It's either all or nothing. Either you the, can invite everybody or you're, or you're not inviting anybody. The one anybody. thing I'll say about because twins... Because of her feelings? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because especially with children, it's not worth it. Children kid I get. Is at home and they're so butthurt that they're not included that I don't think it's worth it. Did hmm. you go everywhere with your sister when you guys were like We're little? 10 years apart. Okay, so, so it was a very job. different story. Okay. But I did hang out with sisters who were a year and a bit apart. And I'll tell you something, leaving one of them out would have been problematic. And they still had their own friends. But if you had, if I had something, there was no way that I was going to invite one sister and not invite the Can other. Can I say something about no twins, way. though, specifically? I want to speak for the twins. I've dated a twin, <gasps> and I've had friends with who are identical twins in particular. And one of the things that has come up time and time again that they say is that people often see them as a unit. Yeah. Like, and they have a hard time differentiating, in particular if they are identical that everyone's like mistaking the one for the other one and they end up a lot of times going into adults and being like, I wish people had earlier on instilled the parents have dress some them autonomy together. Like, yeah. You know, parents Just who dress their kids the same. They, yeah, have some autonomy. So I think actually in this particular case with identical twins, it actually is a gift to start to differentiate. Even if there's a little bit of pain, yeah. I think that that kid down we, the road would actually be thankful for it. Are we talking about seeing them as individuals or are we talking about making them feel welcome in a friend group? I think I think individuals. Things. I think individuals. I think they're individuals, but I think it comes down to the friend group. I mean, if my daughter, my daughter happens to be really close with both of the twins, but if she was only close with one and is not really friends with the other, there's no reason why I should invite that other child. I'm sorry, and, and it's not. And that I, I would talk to the mom if the mom's like, no, they're not friends. That's fine. And so it's it's a family discussion. But to your point, I think it's 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 sort of case by case basis mm -hmm. for sure. Nobody wants to leave kids out. Okay, don't write us about that. Subscribe to The Social Podcast so you don't miss a fiery debate. Until next time, socialites.